giving all praises, honors, and glories unto Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Makakwadash, double honors to the apostles and others of great millstone, Shalom, to the elect scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, this Kwadash Paya. And I just wanted to touch bases on this real quickly on the covenant and how we are not in the new covenant as of yet, right? You got some men that are prophesying, stating that we are in the new covenant. And that's not true because, you know, first and foremost, we're still in captivity, all right? And the promise that um, um, was given unto us was that we, 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 we were not going to teach our, our brothers the laws anymore. Why? Because they were they will be, you know, fully intact in our minds. You know, the kingdom would be restored, established already, and right now that's not the case. Because if that's the case, then you you sound like a Christian. You, oh, we're saved already. No, you're not. You know? Because <laughs> the hour of temptation didn't come yet. Jacob's trouble didn't come yet. You know? World War Three didn't come yet. We still in the we still sinning unwillingly. You know, even willingly, because some things you can't control. But anyway, anyway, just to prove it real quick, Hebrews eight. Uh, matter of fact, no, let's 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 jump to the point with it. Jeremiah chapter thirty one verse thirty one. Behold. The days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, which is the 12 tribes of Israel, not according to the covenant, which is the promise that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, Say if the Lord, so our forefathers have broken the the covenant that the Lord made with them, right? They broke it. They was worshiping other gods, you know. Our people kept sacrificing um, animals as far as sin offerings, and you know they'll they'll they will commit certain sins intentionally, and already have animals to sacrifice. To cleanse those sins. But see, the Son of Man, who the world go, calls JC in the Hebrews, Yahweh Shai, he is the deliverer, right? Which he's going to deliver us out of this captivity that we're still in. But anyway, he sacrificed his flesh. By the shedding of his blood is what covered our iniquities. So the new covenant will be established when he comes back. Right? And to prove it, it says... Verse 33, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts, meaning our minds, and write in their hearts, which we're in the process of that. Because, you know, you can remember scriptures without going to the uh, book itself. You know, you could quote precepts. We rehearse and write. But that doesn't mean you know, because we still go off. We're still teaching our brothers that, that you know, that's, that's, that's not fully converted, right? So it says, and will be their God, and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, right? And in the kingdom, all of our people, so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native and Seminole Indians, which are the biblical Israelites, the 12 tribes, all our people will know the Lord, you know, as soon as they be born. They'll be taught the name, everything, everything, from the youth up, from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. And the Lord is still remembering the iniquities of our, our people. That's why there's so much judgment going on. You see? So, this has yet to happen, Jeremiah 31 and 31. 
All right, real quick, Hebrews chapter 8, verse 8. For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them. Okay, because what? We're not, we're not sacrificing animals anymore. All right? So Hebrews 8 and 8 pretty much says the same thing as Jeremiah 31 and uh, 31. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 10. It says, By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Hamashiach, Yahushai, once for all. So Yahushai is not going to come back to do that again. He did it once, and we were sanctified through the through his offering, you know, of what? Of his body, the shedding of his blood, you know, which Yahweh gave his only begotten son to offer his life for us, man, you know, once and for all. And every priest standeth daily ministering, offering up oftentimes the same sac sac sacrifices, which can never take away sins. So Yahweh Shah is the only one that was that was able to do that. You know, now what we're doing, our daily ministries, we, we're presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice every time we go out there and teach. You know, but Yahweh Shah was the ultimate sacrifice. He was the sacrificial lamb. You know? Because we're not gonna have to sacrifice animals for sins in the kingdom. I mean, we may have to, you know, we're still gonna, you know. Do other uh, other sacrifices, you know, cooking lamb, and, you know, for for certain other reasons, holy days, but not, you know, for sins, not to cleanse it, because Yahweh shy. He 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 covered that already. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of Yahweh, of God. From henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. And we're waiting for that right now. You know, how shall to come back? Because once the enemies, the heathens, is made a footstool unto Yahweh Shai, which also will be made a footstool unto the elect out of the twelve tribes of Israel, which will be when the kingdom of heaven is established in righteousness on the earth. The real restoration. You see? This is why when Revelation the 7, uh, uh, 21, you know, when the scriptures speak about there shall be no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying, no more. Because what? We're not going to go off no more. See? We're not going to have to teach. We're not going to, everything will be uh, 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 natural with it. You know, Genesis chapter 9, verse 11. And I will establish my covenant with you, neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood, neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth, right? Which is what? This time is going to be a way of what? Fire. You know? And the Lord is not going to destroy the entire earth. See? So that has to uh, come to fruition as well, you know. Um, so, you know, you got other words for, for covenant, which is a contract, come, treaty, uh, an agreement, you know, pledge, commitment, a bond, a promise, all right. So I just wanted to bring that out real quick. Real quick, the book of Revelation 21, verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven, meaning kingdom, and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea, right? So this heaven, this kingdom, you know, this rulership on this earth will be passed away. See? It will be refreshed in righteousness. And I, John, saw the holy city. 
which starts with the people, you know, the brothers, the apostles on down, New Jerusalem, coming down, meaning in Hebrew, Yara Shalom, if I'm saying it correctly, meaning a city of peace, because it's going to be peaceful. Coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride, bride adorned for a husband, right? Because we're the, we're the Lord's wife. You know, we're joined uh, unto him, one, that bond, you know, that covenant, that promise, that agreement. And I heard a voice, Salaki, and I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And Yahweh Shah is dwelling with us through the Spirit, but soon he was, he's going to dwell with us in the flesh. This is why when he was sitting, right, you had the wicked scribes and Pharisees look and say, oh, why is he sitting with uh, sinners and publicans? They were talking shit, you know? Why, do, why don't they fast or whatever? Because he was still there amongst them. You see? But anyway, it says, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow. Right? So we still die. Our people still dying. So if we're under the new covenant, then why, why, why are people still, you know, in sorrow, crying, brokenhearted, dying on drugs, committing adultery, worshiping other gods? See? Neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away. So the former things, which everything that's happening now, will be passed away. It's going to be a refreshment, a restoration to restore. All right? Anyway, I hope this uh, quick lesson was edifying. Until next time, I'm going to say Shalom.